got nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to RBL, right versus left. Uh, we record this show because the left is evil and we think everybody needs to know. Uh, I'm Rob B. And with me, as always, is Brad Lee. And of course, today we're going to have a special guest with us. Uh, guest, go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm Brian G. <laughs> we got a nice little thing going on with the names here. Um, yeah. Brian's uh, from Alaska, uh, so he's from a pretty conservative state. Um, but he's actually living in the middle of a. Uh, uh, <laughs> We'll call that a liberal hellscape up there in the state of Washington. So uh, he'll be given his perspective from being a conservative stuck in the pits of hell up there. Oh, so, uh, Brian, uh, welcome. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Uh, Brad, this was your, your uh, topic that you wanted to cover today. So why don't you go ahead and kick it off? Well, <clears throat> my thing is... Uh schools and stuff trying to trans the kids and they just need to stay out of our kids lives and let our kids grow up and be kids like i knew when i grew up that i was a boy i never thought that i would ever be a girl i never even wanted to be a girl so i mean they they try and they try and uh pity you into saying that uh you know you if you if you uh, affirm which i don't understand i don't affirm a child's delusion about whether or not they're a boy or a girl but my eight-year-old daughter knows what a woman is and that is an adult human female who has boobs and a vagina like my like her mom so uh <clears throat> that's where i stand i don't i don't believe in it uh i, I don't think it's right i think they need to keep our kids out of it if you want to be if you want to go and be a transgender when you grow up, that's fine. But I think they need to keep our children out of it because they're innocent and don't know. I mean, these are these are little ones that believe in Santa Claus and that Santa Claus is flying around the world delivering freaking presents. They're not they don't have a, a tentative grasp on reality. So how can they know whether or not they want to be a boy or a girl? <clears throat> well, for me, I think the uh, the issue goes beyond just the transing of kids. It's just the the uh, the attempt of uh, transing uh, people in general, whether they're kids or they're older, uh, takes on a couple uh, uh, very like sick points. Um, the first one would be uh, the gender dysphoria. Now, mm -hmm. we can't deny the science that there are people that are intersex that have chromosomes of. Uh, the opposite gender of their biological pre pre uh, presentation. We, I mean, that does happen. It's exceedingly rare, like 0.01%. So yeah. definitely not the numbers that we're seeing. Um, and then the other part, the scientific aspect that they're completely ignoring is gender dysphoria, the real psychological condition that's been known about for 60 years, um, is kind of given... Uh, credence um it's a it's a body dysmorphia just like uh uh anorexia and bulimia and these people with anorexia and bulimia end up dying from it but we're not sitting there to make them happy going you're right you are fat you should skip a meal or you're right you are fat you should go blow up your dinner um or you know go exercise for the exercise bulimics or whatever we don't we don't uh when people have a non-reality based view of their own bodies, we don't encourage it and reinforce it. And can I push back on that for a little bit? Yeah, go ahead. Because I think that uh, Lizzo is a perfect example of how we do affirm people's body types. Uh, not we, the left. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Lizzo is fat and disgusting. <laughs> and, and, if people like, and if people like her music that's fine but you look at somebody like Adele who was she was fat and she was gross man I got a little bit of a gut and I feel fat and gross and I want to lose it and if I lose it and somebody get, it tries to shame me for losing that weight like they did to Adele I tell them right where to go right if someone told me that I didn't need to gain 
30 pounds, I'd tell them they're full of shit too. Right. I'm I'm just, to, being large is is good and trying to and help. I'm I'm a three hundred and eighty pound guy and I'll tell you not comfortable being the size I am. Uh, well I don't think Lizzo is either. When you see her up on the awards stages giving her yeah. st- speeches of about how oppressed she is, she's wheezing and huffing. It she probably walked a hundred feet and is winded. That ain't healthy. Yeah, and I think and I think a lot of this is about like exactly it's exactly what Hitler did in Nazi Germany, getting people to deny objective reality in order to push your agenda. And in this case, we're trying to get people to die, uh, deny objective reality of what's beautiful. We're trying to get people to d- deny objective reality of what a boy is, what a girl is. We're trying to, to get people to de- deny uh, objective reality about everything. Like they went all through it all during the pandemic as well. Like the they're saying we're the party of science. The science says that it doesn't work. And yet they still push it as law and like try and remove you from the face of the earth if you don't say what they want you to say. And I think that aspect of control has more to do with the trans. Now the going after the kids thing is like the traditional communist um, uh, strategy to the point that the Soviet Union did it. If you went against your parents you were, and reported them to the, to the government, you were, you were given a medal as a hero of the Soviet Union. So I think that that's a big part of it. Well, well what do you, what when we were growing up, didn't ever hear anything about this. I mean, I grew up, I born 75. I grew up late 70s, 80s. Uh, Rob, you were pretty close to my time. But we, we never heard about that. Is that because it was never around? Well, no, I, there was some minor cases, but so rare that it didn't really come to the forefront. Uh, and it started gaining popularity with every yeah. decade that passed. That literally, it went up 100% or 1,000%. <laughs> For every decade that went by, like, well, there, I don't. I was, born I, was I was a teenager before. when I was a teenager. There was a porn out called Chicks with Dicks. So I mean, it was there, but it was yeah, subculture right. because it was a minority. Right. But there's also midget porn and old people porn <laughs> and fat people porn. Oh, God. Right. Well, and then you also then you had RuPaul, right? RuPaul yeah. really yeah. tried to bring it into the mainstream. Well, and I yeah, think and, making people comfortable with who they are is way too far and they've made it almost a fad to hey if you're not comfortable with yourself then you're probably wrong body instead of saying yeah, you know what trying we're, to figure we're out what the problem body. is like they're like oh well because you're not what you think you are or because you're going through a chemical <laughs> change in your body during puberty yeah well and well but at this point they're doing it so young though like i mean you look you look at the reaction to the bill that they dubbed the don't say gay bill which actually just says you don't need to talk to kids yeah before what eight years old about sex or sexual identity and i don't, don't think that goes far this enough. with them because it should not be part of their world no it shouldn't be and it shouldn't be uh, third grade doesn't go far enough i think uh when did we start learning about sex ed sixth grade nah i remember fifth mm-hmm. grade and no, I remember as early as fourth grade, but it really got detailed in fifth and sixth grade. But you grew up in Washington, dude. Yeah. Yeah, we both we both did. Yeah, we oh, went to yeah. school together. We went to school together, yeah. yeah. I remember that we were gonna be learning about it in fifth grade, but uh, right. but yeah. most left up to our parents to explain yeah. to us. And they they had to sign a permission slip for us to get into those yeah. classes. Exactly. Yeah. So the and thing is, like, the oh, thing don't is, tell they your actually that we're talking to you about this. They now actually they started down this this road. If you think about it, anything they don't like, they'll try and silence and censor. But if you remember, the left and the ACLU were defending people like Nambla, mm-hmm. which was the North yeah. American Man Boy Love Association. Mm-hmm. These are freaking pedophiles. Yep. Like and like, there's like billions of tomes of literature out there that were written by pedophiles celebrating pedophilia defended by liberals. And I think it goes to this and like 
I, I'm all for gay people having rights. No, I don't think anybody should have their rights taken away based on the decisions they make in conjunction with another adult human being. Notice my specific words there, adult human being. <laughs> but, be, but, beyond, but beyond that, like, I'm sorry, I know lots of girls that suck dick and they don't get a parade. Right. <laughs> like, I know, you know what I mean? Like, Okay, so you're a dude that sucks dick. You don't need a parade. Okay, you're a girl that goes down on women. You don't need a parade. You love no. somebody of the same sex. You don't need a parade. Every, nobody needs a heterosexual pride parade because it's just life. Okay, that's a part of your life. If that's the way that you went in life, whether you think it's your choice or you think you were programmed that way from birth, okay. But you're living your life and nobody's telling you not to live your life. But what was always kind of a consensus was you leave the kids alone. That's yeah, that's always been that. But then you, it, it, it all started back like what, with uh, John John Money or Mooney or whatever his name was, the guy who uh, worked with those two twins, the one who had the the uh, circumcision gone wrong, and he actually lost lost his junk. And I mean, if you watch uh, "What Is a Woman" with Matt Walsh, then you you know all about him and Kenzie. Both of them, <laughs> Kenzie was a way way quack sex theorist that was. Oh, are you talking weird. about Alfred Kenzie and the Kenzie reports? Yes. That yeah, guy was, the, that the, guy the, was. Like, I was, was listening to the a child molesting pervert. No, there to the Megan Kelly podcast the yeah last night this morning I was doing the paper and they were talking about that very case mm -hmm. uh, where the circumcision was so bad the parents didn't do the other twin didn't do the other circumcision and uh so they took the kids home and the so many problems he couldn't hold this I think it was he couldn't hold his urine or at all because the circumcision was so bad he had so mm -hmm. many accidents that the parents went back and the doc who made money from these uh from these surgeries said i would give him a sex change i'd, I'd give him woman parts you know i'd give him a but get rid of the penis uh, and have it as a woman and then what was it uh several years later uh they chose to tell him that he was actually a boy and they were identical twins and he said i knew it i knew i knew it the whole time i knew i was a boy so they were saying it it showed race just because you raise somebody as a girl doesn't mean they're going to end up as a girl uh it really depends on how you were born but he i guess he accepted he tried to live his change everything and live his life and he altered to a boy and married a woman but by 35 he committed suicide because people wouldn't right. accept him. and and his brother died of an overdose so neither of them lived past 35 or something like that yeah, they didn't say well, anything about his brother. But, and then they, they also had, he also had them doing sexual things to each other as well. I mean, if, if you go in and like do some research about Kinsey, he was, or Mooney, whatever, with money, because money's mm -hmm. the one that did that with the two boys. Yeah. And Kinsey was the guy who was doing experiments on infants and shit about their orgasms and stuff, that we are sexual beings from the minute we come out of the womb, which is a bunch oh. of bullshit. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, big time. Well, I I, I mean, Kinsey, Kinsey, like in his studies, like the majority of the data that he collected was from prisoners. So I think mm -hmm. we're already, he's collecting data from abnormal brains and then we're using that as a baseline yeah. for what's normal among people. Yes, yeah, um, so it was all, it was all fraudulent. Yeah. Well, I mean, he was collecting data, but he wasn't collecting data from an actual scientific random sampling because right, you no, can't, he, because because prisoners already are defective and not representative of society. You know, uh, I mean, I, th I think the statistics like it, it's funny in retail that you get into some of this, like 20 percent of people aren't going to ever steal, for example. Um, they would just never do it, no matter what the circumstances are. Yeah. Um, the next 60% of people are, if they were pushed into a position where they felt like they had no choice, they might, if there was not going to be any consequence. And then the other 20% are going to do it whenever they get the chance, regardless, 
And of course, they generally have the arrogance that they don't think they're going to be any consequences or the consequences won't matter. So I think that that I, I think that uh, that when you apply that, that applies kind of the society as a whole. In a lot of areas of uh, crime. And so when you go to and you study the um, the steady, the the population of prisons for something that's an act that is heavily swayed by morality, you're of course going to get like completely like misconstrued numbers. So that's why, that's why like, like failing to get a random sampling, you know, just like they do with the polls. Now they can't ever get a random sampling because, you know, Republicans are at work and Democrats are sitting around collecting unemployment. So they're the ones that answer the surveys. (laughs) Here's another, here's a, here's one thing that I've noticed about, people that are weird, you know, like Alfred Kinsey, you know, there's something wrong with them because in every freaking picture you see of him, he's wearing a stinking bow tie. Hey, I'm about to be wearing a bow tie for my wedding. So don't be talking. Okay, about okay, but no you're not tie. running around every day wearing a bow tie. Are you, Rob? <laughs> okay. But okay. So, but this was what back in the forties and fifties, I think that was probably a bit more common. Oh yeah. Tell that to uh, Bill Nye. <laughs> Anyway, I, I I do I do like um, the take of uh, Bill Maher on his show. Um, the comment that he made on it was, "If it truly is one hundred percent natural, why is it only happening in liberal areas? Either right. Ohio is suppressing it, or California is creating it." Mm-hmm. Rob the. I have some numbers. Williams Institute uh, at UCLA. Uh, I mean, studies and it shows 1.6 million ideas transgender, 13 and up. Uh, 1.3 million of those is adults, 300,000 is youth. And they even broke it down by percentage of youth. Someplace like North Carolina, 9% of youth identified as trans. But in New York, 3% 3% in New York identify for the highest. Well, if you, if you, but if you even look at like, uh, like uh, Bill uh, covered it on the same show, like looking at the, uh, the gay and lesbian thing, like same thing, like the way the stats are trending, like in Biden's generation, it was like 1%. In the next generation, it was like 5%. Now it's like 15%. And if it keeps going this way by 2060, we'll all be gay. That's not a natural curve. Yeah. No, that's well, a spike. Because when you're when you're talking to kids who are still forming their opinion, audience, and you're telling them if you're uncomfortable, then it's because you're in the wrong body. You're not you're not saying, well, it's natural to be uncomfortable because you're changing. You're going through changes. Yeah. So you're okay. Going, well, what, and you're here's what I have to say: When I was six years old and younger, I wanted to be Lion-O from Thundercats. Yeah. No, I, I wanted to be a pro NBA player, which I ended up being pretty tall. But at the time, every indication was I was going to be about five feet tall when I grew up. Yeah. So that wasn't really realistic. Uh, at one point, I wanted to be the emperor of the world because I was really into strategy games at the time. So I thought I was going to conquer the world. You know, um, these are all kids like want ridiculous things because they don't understand reality in the world. Like, even when I was going into college, studying um, uh, accounting, you know how many days I worked as an accountant? 33 as part (laughs) of an internship. And that made me decide that I did not want to do accounting. Now, the accounting ended up being useful in uh, career and retail management because I understood where the numbers came from. And it made me pretty good at my job. But (laughs) it's not what I wanted to do. Oh, when yeah. I was 18. Oh, and before that, I was taking biology classes and chemistry classes and all this. Uh, while I was in high school, I was taking part in Washington's program where you take your classes at the college instead of at the high school. Yeah. And I was ta- I was taking all these classes because I wanted to be pre-med. Yeah. Then I took a human cadaver dissection course, hit the floor in about 30 seconds and was like, OK, I grew up on a farm. I can butcher an animal, but seeing the inside of a human knocks me out. Probably medicine's not my field. <laughs> yeah, I always knew you were a wuss. <laughs> anyway, 
hey, <laughs> I do really good in emergency situations. When my daughter gashed her eye open, oh, I got yeah. her collected, got it taken care of, got her to the hospital, got her her stitches. As soon as the doctor said it was good, my adrenaline crashed and I crashed. <laughs> Bro, and that's because I was somebody that you love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, I couldn't do it day in and day out, and I knew it, so I changed the course of study into other things that I was interested in. Yeah. Not really sure. Why. I'm still fascinated by like um, quantum physics and uh, nanofabrication and uh, astrophysics and all these fields. So I'm not sure why I didn't go into science, but I had kind of always been in business on the farm, so it just made sense to do business. Do we ever think that maybe the whole point in pushing this transgenderism is to uh, uh, control the population? I don't think it's about controlling the population. I think it's about destroying society. It's about destroying the family unit. So the only thing anyone's loyal to is the government. I think that's the point. Well, I think that's in the background. I think a lot of them generally believe that, you know, if they're awkward, it's probably because there's something going on there. Not because no, it's a natural I, process to feel awkward. I think the sheep are following the hat. They're the ones that are still wearing a freaking mask outside yeah. when it's 110 degrees in Texas. Or in that, their cars alone. Um, but the people actually directing this, it's an, a, a direct attempt to destroy society. And it's the strategy that they always took use uh, go after the children get into the universities and uh the educational system and create racial strife to cause so much turmoil the people beg out for the government to take more control bam boom communist dictatorship it was discussed we've talked about this on other topics it was part of the 1929 com intern and their strategy about how they were going to flip the united states to communism they could not do it in this country on a economic scale like they did in Vietnam and China and Russia and the Eastern countries because there wasn't an aristocracy and a peasantry because we have a middle class. So now they're constantly working to shrink the middle class. That's what the 87,000 new IRS agents are for is to keep pounding that middle class out of existence, creating the racial strife to get the violence going, driving the crime into the city. So people get so desperate They beg the government for help because we know better than trusting the government. But when we get desperate, they think that we'll just turn to the government. And I think the whole transient thing is the point. And the reason they're trying to do it younger is for the same reason. And they don't and they don't want the peasantry to breed. That's why they push abortion. That's why they push transient. That's why they try and tell everybody they're gay because gay couples don't make babies. No, they don't. They can't. The only people that they want breed, the only people they want breeding, are the immigrants that they think are going to be beholden to them. And they're finding out now that that's wrong because more and more uh, of the minority are switching to the right side. It's yeah, but they still have a big margin there. Yeah, like, but not for not for long. And it, with all the laws that are coming through, it doesn't look like uh, they're going to get their universal. Uh, right to vote whether you're a fucking citizen or not okay two million people came in last year under biden's policies two million people already this year under biden's policy and that's what we caught so it's actually closer to eight million in two years (coughs) and they're intentionally spreading biden was intentionally spreading them out into democrat areas because if they can hammer through like they've hammered some of this other stuff through or like dope some republicans into going along with it and manage to pass the pathway to citizenship? Yes. After they get citizenship from the people that let them in, I don't care what their actual family beliefs are. I do agree that for at least a decade, they're going to vote religiously for those people. And 10 years of uncontested power and the seats on the Supreme Court that we have the bulwark right now that we just barely got under Trump. Um, yeah, that's the end. And besides, they'd be able to pack the court by then. And we'd be, we'd be I, I'd say, inside of a decade, we'd already be communist. But it's all part of the same thing. Hispanics Every, switching over to conservatives. Yeah, I understand. But if you brought it, but that's, that, but that's Hispanic voters. Yeah. All the, 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 at, you add, okay, so it was 11 million 30 yeah. years ago. 
So it's probably the estimates before Biden took office was actually closer to 24 to 28 million. So now you're looking at closer to 30 million to 32 million. You're talking fully 10 percent of the population. If you get 10 percent of the population grateful to your party for making them citizens before they figure before they figure out how bad these people are and that these people are exactly what they fled, you will have enough of of an electoral support, even with 30 percent of them that you'll have enough power to change everything before anybody gets a chance to stop it. Mm-hmm. That is the plan on the immigration. And I think, I, I think the transing the kids, it's just another way. I, and actually, I think to a degree, going after the kids is to rile up conservatives so they can paint them as bigots and so they can paint them as uh, extremists. But I'm sorry, cutting off a little kid's genitalia is extreme. Oh, it's extreme. That should not be legal until they're adults. That this is, you know, letting but someone then, but, to some, I, some point that they won't be able to go back is unexcusable. But but again, at the same time, these are the people that are supporting abortion. But if I say I want to stab a baby through the heart, everybody's going to recoil at that. Not everybody. No. Almost oh, everybody's going to recoil, recoil about that. Even people that are pro-choice are going to recoil at the idea of stabbing a baby in the heart. Now, if I let that sit for a good 30 seconds and go, oh, but it'll still be in the mom's belly, that's not going to change it in their mind. It actually frustrates me that conservatives don't actually speak that way. Like, Ted Cruz gets a lot of ears. He should be saying, pro-abortion means you stab them in the heart. If that doesn't kill them, you drown them in the sink. It they're saying it's okay to do this to babies. Well, I think oh. it's more like stabbing them in their brain and sucking their brains out. Is so I actually I actually, I actually I actually knew a girl that was a failed abortion, and literally she was missing like fingers on one hand and had a scar that went from her the middle of her sternum down to about where her left kidney was. It barely missed her kidney. Oh, there's a documentary on the Daily Wire called uh, Choosing Death, the Legacy of Will. And they had a girl on there who was, she was a she was a twin. Her mom had an abortion when she was like 13 or something like that. And uh, one twin died and one twin survived? Well, yeah, one twin died and one twin survived. But they didn't know that she had twins. She had had twins. So they got the one out. And didn't realize that there was another one in there. And you know, so- I think that I think that makes a pretty good case that these so-called doctors and so-called scientists on the left don't know what the hell they're talking about of what's going on in utero or what's going on with children when they can't even tell the difference between one and two. Right. Well, I mean, this was back before there was like the really good technology like that we have now. They've had sonograms for seventy years, which is which is why. Well, they didn't. They get. They got better. Yeah, they weren't as good as they are now. You, that's just a guarantee. Yeah, but I still think they would have followed up with a sonogram afterwards to make sure there weren't any problems. You think Planned Parenthood really that? gives sonograms? They don't want to give sonograms because once the woman sees that there's a life inside of her, they aren't going to go through with it. Which is why these pregnancy places, these pro-life pregnancy places have them get an ultrasound so that they can see what's going on inside them. And a lot of the times it's the deciding factor is that sonogram. So, so Mike, now the, the trans and the kids thing, uh, did you see uh, what bank was it? I forget. So for the Idaho pride festival, one of the big banks pulled out of it. Yeah. Bank of America, bank of America, because they found out that they were going to hold a kid drag show. And the same thing happened in Salt Lake City. The big bank in Salt Lake City, the Zion National, National Bank. Bank, they pulled out too. They said, no, we're not doing it because they were going to have drag time story hour for the kids. And they're like, no. Like, why would you try and do that in a Mormon town? I, I don't because know. Trying to all that drag shows are okay for kids. It's, it's yeah, just... this, or even drag shows. We've had drag shows here in, in Roanoke, Texas. They had a, a drag show for kids at this uh at a brewery and antifa was standing outside 
standing guard with uh, AR-15s, which is really weird because isn't the left like against guns? <clears throat> yeah, I'm too. I'm too. Uh, too bad the uh, real fascists didn't show up to show what Antifa is. No. Oh, there was anti-protesters there. No, my my joke was that Antifa is the fascist. So. Right, exactly. That's why they went there armed. and re- it's uh, Clearly Antifa doesn't know what fascists what are. The fu part is. Well, that's most of the left. Exactly. Well, that's, yeah, why, every- that's why they're calling us fascists when we're sitting oh, here yeah. being peaceful and well, they're out there calling us- killing people all the time. Calling us goes against pretty much everything we believe in. Yeah, exactly. Nazis, communists, all those are totally the opposite of them is. And, it, uh, and, and that and just and goes to show that we understand are... them more than they understand us. They don't understand conservatism, but we understand the uh, liberalism. So, and then I also, I there's there's also, they're, they're going after it through the literature too. There's like all these books with not just pedophilia in them but like graphic sexual like oh, yeah. descriptions in them in the school libraries like any parent with a kid in public schools right now should demand to be able to walk through the public library and see what they have in there right yeah yeah you should they but you know what's funny though is they'll say that all books should be in the the public libraries but when you ask them to put the Bible in the library, they're totally and completely against it. Or um, what is it? What 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 was the book? Uh, the Walrus. Johnny uh, the Walrus. Johnny the Walrus. They're not going to put that in there. They're not going to put. Uh, they won't put my book in there when I when I publish it. Oh, when I got my first Johnny the Walrus book, my daughter begged me to let me let her take it to school, and I was kind of skeptical about it. But you should. Yeah, so she did. Good. Yep. yep, I let her. I, I just told her that I wanted to, I wanted that book back, though. <laughs> That's a good dad. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I read. We got it, and I read it to her, and then I made her read it to me. Well, I didn't make her. She wanted to read it to me. And she totally instantly caught it, caught the the grasp of the of the storyline. She was like, "Yeah, you can't. A girl can't be a boy, and a boy can't be a girl. You can like the same things that boys like, but that doesn't mean that you're a boy." Oh, come on. When we were kids, if if a girl... I like sushi, that doesn't make me Japanese. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we were kids. If somebody I was, you know, if a girl was equating themselves a lot to the male side, they were tomboys. Right. And they didn't try to go themselves and they weren't offended if you called them, if you said, Hey girl, how's it going? Or, you know, whatever. If you called them a girl, they didn't, because they are. They knew yeah, my, they my, were, si- my sister was a tomboy and it's, a, yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's really funny. Like, well, for one, if you tried to tease her being a tomboy, you'd probably get your ass kicked. Which is beat up most of the boys. Right. She, it, she she petitioned to be on the boys football team because the people playing powder puff were wimps. Yeah. So she she actually uh, wanted to play with football with the the real boys. Um, but uh, you fast forward now, she's been married for twenty five years. She has two kids. Um, but in today's current culture, they would have like told her that she's a boy and ruined her ability to have children and given her drugs and. If, if my mom had refused, they would have been trying to throw her in jail, saying that she's abusing her child. Well, that's the whole thing is you identify a little bit as, hey, I, I really like pretending to be a boy a lot. Not necessarily saying I'm a boy, but still identifying I'm a girl, but I like doing a lot of the boy things. And it was just a tomboy. And as they grew up and got more comfortable with themselves, they then <laughs> kids and, they, and they're like, man, I'm so glad that I never – became a boy because I'm not. Right. Uh, and it's all of this really all temperament. Like we have there are effeminate boys just like there are uh masculine girls. Yeah. I, I, I think I think personally none of this crap should be discussed with children. Sex should not be discussed yeah. with children. 
period. Absolutely. They should be given the biology of sex, of sex and the consequences of sex. Yeah. And beyond that, nothing should be discussed. Now, granted, like you, Brad, you never met my daughter. Brian, you did. Oh, yeah. Like we knew when she was like eight years old that she liked girls. She shared a crush on me when she was a little girl, though. Right. Well, but when she was eight Uh, years old, it was obvious she liked girls and she liked girls all the way up until she was a teenager. And at 15, 16, she started dating boys again and she's been dating boys ever since. So even that can be a phase if stuff's not being pushed on them. And that's with her mom being kind of crazy and probably pushing stuff on her. Right. So I, I think I think all of it needs to be blocked out of everything until junior high. You teach them the biology of it, just like we learn. And let's face it, all these kids have phones now. If they really have deep questions about it, they're going to start looking for answers. Um, hopefully they stay out of the chat room so they don't like run into a groomer teacher. Oh, right. so that's another one. Did you guys see about the that story about the groomer in uh, Hawaii? Uh, I think I heard about it. Yeah, so there was a there was a teacher who was uh, pro trans and pro gay, and he was constantly he was very active with like absolute vitriol on Twitter. Now, ironically, even up to and including like insulting people, personal attacks, and threatening them, yet he was never suspended, never had his uh, tweets banned. He never got banned, of course um, not, because he was he, so but, but he was calling he was calling people uh, pedophiles and groomers. And then it came out that he had groomed his students and was having sex with a 13-year-old boy in school during the lunch breaks. And not only was he doing that, he was recording it and sending it to his other pedophile friends on the mainland. Hmm. Hmm. Well, and I I'm sorry. What... I think any teacher that insists on... De- what I, I don't even understand the idea of looking at a kid and even wanting to talk about sex or think about sex. Yeah, yeah that's disgusting. So, like, and I'm sorry, there's no way you can possibly be thinking that these people need to hear these kids. They're babies. They don't need to hear about this crap. Like, they still think the stork brings a baby. You know what I mean? Right. Like, why are we talking to them about sex? It's it, it's about destroy. It's about destroying civilization. The only people stupid enough to actually buy this stuff. Yeah, I, I I do think though, if they keep it up though, I mean, well, the reason they're doing it in the schools is because they're not having kids. Because everything they're doing is destroying their reproduction. Right. So they got to do it in the schools so they can come after my kids, so they can come after your kids. Because the gays and lesbians aren't having kids. That's why they had the big push to adopt. Trans kids or trans people can't have kids because they're not in their own gender. And so they have to go after your kids to keep their push going because they don't have their own kids. Which brings me back to population control. I, I don't think I don't think it's about population control. I don't think it, I don't think it's solely about population control, but think about it. I think if it's about pushing, if you're no, pushing no, no, no. these people to be transgender, then they can't have kids because they'll cut their parts that reproduce out, and no matter what, they're not going to be have going to be having kids. Like the other day, I saw in one of these hearings, uh, uh, they asked, uh, he asked one of the ladies that they were uh, interviewing. They they asked her. Uh, she asked him. I can't remember who he was talk- who she was talking to, but if he believed that men could become pregnant, and he said no, oh. I don't. And she goes, "Oh, then you're denying trans people live." I'm like, "Well, that what is that? I can't. I don't care what you tell me. If I think that I'm a woman, there's no way that I'm ever going to pr- reproduce." Children. Are you talking about the confirmation hearing of the yeah. Supreme Court justice that can't? Depend no, on- no, it was a, it was a different one. It was about. It was after Roe v. Wade and they had a hearing and there was some fucking pro-choice lawyer that came on and was talking about uh, transgenderism crap and called one of the... You sure it wasn't the confirmation hearing for that justice? Because the the same conversation was It was was a lawyer that was talking to uh, Howie about 
because uh, they were trying to push through that bill to codify Roe into into law. So I, I think I would put it this way. If you aren't able to identify what a man is and what a woman is, uh, you're not qualified to teach about sex. <laughs> or, or, or talk about abortion. Like, if you don't know what a man is or what a woman is. Well, okay, so the, the, the abortion well, I'm just thing saying, is the, the, there's the no way in, I'm just saying which, there's no way in hell that I am ever going to be able to carry a child. I'm never going to be able to deliver a child. Are you sure about that? I'm, I'm 100%. <laughs> so, so, but then there's the, the, the other aspect of it, though, is that, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, well, yeah this ain't twins. <laughs> or, or what, what, yeah, what? the comment about a man having a baby just made me lose my train of thought. Oh, it, my it, God. Wasn't twin. it wasn't twins, but I know oh, it wasn't mean. twins, right. What so, was it? um, yeah, so I, know, I, I can I, remember that, what movie. I'm horrible with names, but it wasn't twins, right? But it had Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. Yeah, it had it had both of them in it. Arnold Schwarzenegger, where he had the baby transplanted into his gut, right? Yeah, he carried it. So, um, but then man, again, you guys like threw me for a loop there. Anyway, he um, he had well, it was junior. It was junior. Junior. Yeah. Junior. Yeah, he had it planted in him. He didn't get pregnant. No, exactly. <laughs> Well, but you know, I mean, they had the cover of that magazine of the pregnant man. Yeah. Yeah, but that was so a the woman that was identifying as a man and got pregnant. Exactly. Yeah. By by her uh, trans partner. Like, that's a normal couple. Like, what are you guys doing? Yeah. You're I'm a just... girl who likes a boy and you're a boy who likes a girl. Why are you guys playing Ill. the switch roles? If you want to play the switch roles, okay, do it behind closed doors. Don't do it out in society. You don't have to do all that. Well, that's just it, too, is we just don't want people forcing their ideas on us. I mean, if you want to do it at home and that's your ideal, then good for you. But, but that's, that's you don't why, need to force it into our becoming, kids. That's why it's becoming so popularized is because we are that way. We need to take a stand and say, no, this is not right. It's not moral. Stop it. This is not. We, we deserve to be able to have a little bit of normality in yeah. society. Well, I mean, I, it's actually like, it, it, it's funny. Do you guys listen to Tim Cast at all, Tim Pool? No, no, not really. So he's actually a libertarian, but he's like full on libertarian where he's like, he was always socially liberal. Like he worked on socially liberal campaigns. And like, as he's gotten older, it's and like gone along. It's funny, like watching him as he slowly transforms into a conservative. But he's still fairly libertarian. Like, I'm kind of the same way as far as, like, I'm a libertarian. Yes, like, I, I, don't, I don't care if people are gay. Be gay, gay in your bedroom. Don't make me see it. But if you're heterosexual, go be heterosexual in your be bedroom and don't make me see it. Uh, okay, so here's a, que here's a question for you now. I guess that you're for gay marriage then. Um, I don't think the government has any business in marriage at all. Okay, and what? Why? Yeah. I, I don't. I don't. I don't yeah. believe in marriage taxes. I don't believe in child tax credits. I don't believe in any of it. I believe in this as far as the federal government should recognize that two people are couples and yeah, marry yeah. that way. So for legal terms, so if something happens, the other spouse. No, I, I think the government stays out of it because it's ultimately. No, well, see, so here's the here's the reason I say that because like ultimately, like who you spend the rest of your life with is between you and God, and yeah. anytime you insert the government into anything, you can guarantee it's going to get screwed up, to where, right. to where like nowadays there are actually men out there that are like paying child support and alimony, uh, to a woman who cheated on him their entire marriage, and the kids aren't even his, right. But because well, the government inserted itself into uh, marriage and uh, child rearing and passed laws that don't really make sense in context of reality, that we need to keep the government out of the marriage business. Like, it's none of their business who I spend the rest of my life with. And as far as um, as far as if uh, two adults want to have a civil union or a union before God because their religion recognizes it great the government doesn't have anything to do with it yeah okay they, they need to recognize as far as for any legal terms as when it
if something happens to the one and the other one's trying to answer for what to do or like in the hospital if some major emergency happens okay and i think and i think that like that's part of putting responsibility on people like hey you need to like determine who's your uh medical power of attorney hey you need to decide what happens in xyz situation so let's give people their responsibility back and not involve the government in something that they're not involved in and i think it should be like very clear like i mean i'm sorry uh e even in the case of a spouse a spouse doesn't necessarily always have the other spouse's best interests in mind when no. they're making these decisions but I, and, yet the, I, and yet the spouse automatically gets the last say because well that's the spouse well i've seen a lot of loveless marriages where the spouse should not be making that decision yeah. as you know I, Rob, i'm conservative not libertarian but i mean what i what i think is the government should not be able to force a religion to I, exactly. I, and that's, that's, no, that's, but, that's the thing. That's the thing. I'm glad you said that because that brings me to my point. Because right now they want to codify a law saying recognizing gay marriage, saying that yeah. every gay person has the right to be married. Oh, which then oh means, that li which, okay. I'm which glad then means, out. hold on, listen, which then means that if you allow that and these people go to a Catholic church and try and get a Catholic church yeah. to marry them, but the Catholic <laughs> church says no. Then they can sue the Catholic Church. What they're doing oh, is okay. So what I was going to say is that law they're trying to pass is far more insidious than that. It, it, but they're coming after religion. Okay, but the way the way they're doing it, it's far more insidious than that. Oh, so, yeah, what 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 they actually put in there actually makes it so the federal government can go after any school um, or um, church or organization. That does not believe because on religious grounds in gay marriage, they can take away their 501c status and try and bankrupt them. Yep. And then they have no religious freedom. Yeah, exactly. So, so okay, but so that so this again, this is the, but this is again the government being involved in marriage. If we just say it's none of the government's business, then you go back to this is my business. I have a right to refuse service to anyone for any reason. Okay. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. If you're refusing to serve gay people, then gay people will stop going there and people that think you should serve gay people will stop going there and you will make the business decision whether or not you're going to cater to that or whether you're going to stick to your beliefs. You know what I'm saying? The government does not need to be involved in that. The free think, market can handle that. I see what you're saying, but I don't I think there's more people that are like like us. I don't care what you do, but don't push it on me. And so right, but the, but the minute, you, but but the minute what I'm you, saying is there's a lot fewer people that would be like, oh, you don't want to you don't want to serve gay people, then I don't then I don't want to shop at your store. Fine. That's like that's like people saying that um Twitter and Facebook and uh, uh Instagram, they're all private companies. So but they're not private you, companies, they you, have no, I'm never listening to me. I'm making platforms. a point. No, stop, just chill. <laughs> they're saying that they're private companies. Obviously, they're not because the government is getting involved in telling them what to do. So people are like, oh, well, they're a private private company. They can do what they want to do. It's free speech, blah, blah, blah. Why don't you go start your own? And now we're doing that, and they're getting pissed off about it. And shutting them down like uh, Patreon and uh, – or what was it? It, no, it, what was, was it? it was uh, – oh, crap. I can't remember. Uh, you know the one I'm talking Parler. about. But, but, yeah. but that was because they didn't have their own servers. No, but okay. So here, here was my thing though. Here's, here's, here's the thing on uh, the social media. They're exempted from lawsuits about what's on their, con what content's on their thing because they were supposed to present uncensored content. As right. long as it did not violate the law, like pedophilia or like uh, snuff film, stuff like that. It was not supposed to be pulled down. They were not supposed to moderate. They were not. And supposed they weren't to supposed to be in cahoots with the government. Well, like and, the whole well, and that, that's 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 the First Amendment violation. But they were given an exemption, uh, so they could maintain free speech. So the because minute they, they were, the minute the minute they started um, editing, started editing, they became publishers. And now right. that they're publishers, they are liable for everything. But the government still doesn't want to recognize them as publishers because of the Section 230. 
Well, the appeals court just ruled you can now sue. Uh, you can now sue uh, Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat. Yeah, if you're in Texas. I'm in Texas. So are you? I know. <laughs> so so file in Texas. Doesn't say you have to be a resident of Texas. The company operates in Texas. Yeah. So, um, but no, um, yeah. For, for, as as far as what I was saying though, it's just about like the 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 marriage standpoint. Like as soon as you put the government in anything, it gets way more complicated. You oh, know yeah, what? The government, the government has never built anything good. <laughs> yeah. So here's my thing: if I'm getting married and I go in and I order a wedding cake. I'm going to give them the description of the cake that I want and walk out, then come back and pick up the cake. They may or may not ever see the person I'm marrying. Yeah. Right. Like That's... it is, it, it, it only even becomes an issue if you're forcing your lifestyle on other people. Right. And so in the libertarian point, keep your personal life personal, keep the government out of your personal life. But I'm so I'm so libertarian that like I'm even like, you know what, I don't care about legalized drugs until you're high outside your house or commit a crime to feel to feed the drugs. But that's how libertarian I am. And I'm the person, the only thing, the only vice I got is my cigarettes. You yeah. know, but I experimented with all that stuff when I was a kid. Like I get what people like about it. I just think it's a waste of brain power and a waste of time and a waste of money. But if that's how you want to waste your time and money and how you want to numb your life because you're not doing things to uh, give yourself true fulfillment and happiness, then, okay, do that. But do it in your own home. Well, um, I, think the, I think the reason people become dependent on drugs is because of their, they, they, they're mentally in, unstable. There's a, there's a mental thing going on there. You're getting high to, to get rid of the reality. I know because I was a I was an alcoholic and I quit. And I, I don't really think that addiction is a disease. I mean, let's think about it. And there's been people probably would disagree with me. In fact, I know people that w do disagree with me, like Andrew Clavin would disagree with me saying that addiction is not a disease. But when's the last time somebody quit cancer? <laughs> I mean. Honestly, I don't know. You have to get those stats from the American Cancer when, Society. When was the last time somebody uh, quit schizophrenia? I mean, did, no, but that there are, sense? but there are psychological. Okay, so it, it, it's a psychiatric disease, but it, but it is a disease, and it's intensified by the fact that there are biological uh, addiction factors. So, um, like again, dude, you knew my stepdad. You didn't know my dad, but my dad was a violent alcoholic. My stepdad was a verbally abusive alcoholic. Mm -hmm. um and a pothead so the, i think the only reason he wasn't particularly violent although he did beat the shit out of my brother really good one time but he kind of had it coming anyway <laughs> I, I don't condo condone child abuse and i never struck my children but oh my god my brother deserved it <laughs> but we kind of um, went off the whole topic of uh trans and the kids but but yeah i like this i like where we're going Hey, yeah, that's, why, that's why I just it. add in what else you talk about. Um, but yeah, I still, I still, I still have to back, back it up to like anything the government's involved in becomes a mess. Um, and the schools are still majority like provided by the government, so like the government should not be involved in sex. That's a personal thing. So people in your personal life should be the ones handling that. The government, not should, your the teacher government. that is being paid to educate you in math, science, reading, engineering, computers not a goes into b and you make a baby <laughs> mm -hmm. i don't i don't think the government should even be involved in teaching our children either that's that's just me yeah i am kind of look at I, look I'm at, free look at on where that the public well. schools are right now i mean yeah i'm free market on that as well and then and then the reality is like a fraction of the money that we get for education actually goes to education um and your average school, like two thirds of the budget goes for administrators and teachers and not materials for teaching children. And then we know the teachers are horrible and they're like pushing their political ideologies in the classrooms. And that's not what from the classes are for. Now, I'm OK with like uh, Washington State had like their CWP class where they were teaching a little bit of an intro to the contemporary world problems that people are going to be talking about in college. 
presumably the next year if you go to college, or that you're going to encounter as life as you go out into the world and the workforce and whatnot. Um, but beyond that, it should be reading, writing, arithmetic, and like let's push STEM so we're at the leading edge of the world, you know. Um, but definitely like stay away from the kids, like they and honest. letting the government near the kids, letting the government near anything is what causes the problem. And we let the government near our kids for two hundred years, and look what happens. Yeah, I also think that real honest uh, history needs to be involved as well. Like, none of this, what, 16, 19 project? Oh, like, okay, that's another, that, we that's, need, a, we need okay, to that's way off topic. That's way off topic. We'll, 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 we'll a whole do. other show. No, yeah, well, 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 I'm just, I'm just saying that, you know, you're saying reading, writing, arithmetic, but history is in there too. You know, uh, we're coming up on an hour here, so uh, Brad, you, I mean, it was a good discussion. We could probably go for like two, three hours, but I want to kind of keep the show down to an hour. Um, uh, Brad, do you have any final comments that you want to say on the, the original topic of the transit the kids? No, just when it comes when it comes to the, the kids, let the kids be kids. They're going to, the, they're all going to have uh, issues with how comfortable they are in their body. Transing them isn't it isn't going to keep them from being suicidal. It's just not. Um, Scott Nugent was 40, 42 when uh, he decided to do the transition, and now he regrets it. How long has Bruce Jenner been trans? I don't know, four years, five years. Give give it a while. Even you know he he thinks that you know. Well, I think that I would. I think that was from him being a Jenner, though. You know, because you know. In that family, you can't want a white dick. Well, yeah, look at I mean, <laughs> look at look at who he married. So you know, I mean, just let's yeah. let's just keep this out. Let's let the kids be kids and let them figure it out. When they want, right, if they decide Brian, if they decide when they turn eighteen or whatever that they still want to go on with it, a high percentage shows that it's just a phase and they will grow out of it. And we should just leave them alone and let them be and let them discover themselves, just like I did. Oh, and absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead, Brian. My biggest thing is for is pushing this on to kids and make and having something happen that they're not going to be the reverse later. All kids are uncomfortable in their bodies. Uh, it's not because, you know, it's not because they're they were born a boy and they're a girl. Now, is there transgenderism? Absolutely, I think that there is, but I think it's significantly rare and very uncommon. When they get older and they become an adult and their body's changed, if they want to go through it, then that's their choice. But don't push it onto a you know six-year-old, ten-year-old, thirteen-year-old, fifteen-year-old, whatever. Don't push it onto them and have them end up doing something that they're never going to do the reverse. They're never going to yep. have kids. They're, it's, you're pushing them to do something that's going to change their body so significantly that when they, if if they decide later that this was a mistake, they'll never be able to fully reverse it. Let them grow yeah. up. Let them so, grow and up. My, and, and, my fi and my final words on it is gender and sex has to do with sexual reproduction. I mean, that's the whole biological principle. Uh, we I didn't even get get around to talking about the the, the plastics causing hermaphrodism in frogs and uh, causing the altered hormone levels in kids because of the the leaching out of the plastic uh, packaging. Like I didn't even get to get into that where there is like an actual issue with it causing this that's causing some of the confusion. Um, but ultimately, uh, to me, it just breaks down on a black and right, white, whatever, like our society, depending on the state, it's 16 to 18 years old for age of consent. If you're not beyond the age of consent in that class and you're an adult and you feel the need to talk about your sex life or their sex life with a kid, you're a pedophile and you should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. And whether that's talking about their sexuality, their, uh, their, their gender identity, any of that. It's all around their sex. And if you're an adult and you need to address sex with a child, there is something wrong with you. The parents do eventually are going to have to have that conversation with their kids about sex. And it's up to the parents to have that. The other thing on that is, um, yeah, the parents. It comes back to the parents. Nothing should ever be taught to kids without the parents' okay. 
because I remember even looking back, we had to bring permission slips before sexual education. Everybody brought them. Everybody, except for one person that I remember in sixth grade, everybody was in that class except for one person who wasn't in there because of religious reasons. Everybody else was in that class because the parents knew what was going to be taught and they signed off on it. And we had to take the parent uh, packet home that told the teachers, we need to get back to that. Um, but I just think the whole topic shouldn't even be existing with kids because stay the hell away from my kids. I agree. So anyways, it was a great show. You guys, thanks for coming by. Um, man, oh man, I, I, I'm like seeing future topics coming up on the little peripherals of this one. I, I think we do very need, very, uh, soon need to do, um, a show on altered history including a lot of the history that even you and I learned, Brad, that mm -hmm. traveling the world, I learned that isn't entirely accurate um, as far as like what's going and how it applies even to what's going on in the world today. So I'm glad you brought up the altering of history. So anyways, you guys have a great night. Thanks for joining the show for the revelers joining the show. I hope you guys enjoyed listening. Um, we're going to try and do a couple of the full podcasts. We're going to do rants like once a week. Uh, Brian, I hope you join us regularly. It was mm -hmm. nice to have you on the conversation as well. Hey, yeah. Rob, leave a review. <laughs> yeah, le re leave a review. Make sure to subscribe mm -hmm. so you catch all of our podcasts wherever you're listening to us, whether it's Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, whatever. Um, we're on every pod we're on every podcast uh, application. So make sure that you follow us so you catch all of our content. Um, going forward, I'm going to make sure we had a little bit of a break and I'm going to make sure that we keep content coming. So we keep talking about the things that we think matter to us and that matter to society and that matter to people. All right. Hey, let's stay for a minute and chat after we end the show. Uh, I'll give a call back in. <laughs> <clears throat>